and welcome back to the channel everybody so we're gonna first start off our day with renaming this project and we're just gonna call this the the engine swapped MR2 so I'm we'll gonna get right to it we're gonna pull this engine out of here and we'll discuss our drivetrain options Okay, so now it's time to discuss our engine options. So off to my right, you can see we have the K-Series motor, which is still an option. It's gonna be bolt into this car, no problem. Now, the next up, we have the Audi 4.2 V8. This is a front runner on my list. However, it's very complicated. This is the high pressure fuel injection system vehicle. So probably gonna lean against this at the moment. And over here, if you haven't already been able to identify it, this is a Toyota V6, the 2GR FE. So this is what we're going to put in the new MR2 swap. All right, let's discuss all the reasons why this engine is going to be difficult to put in this vehicle. So number one, we do not want to install this car, this engine transverse like a front wheel drive car. So we're going to be using that transaxle right there. Now here's the thing, that transaxle is from the Porsche. We need to have a Porsche clutch as well as a flywheel that, that will accept that. So number one, this is a Toyota flywheel. And now when we put a Porsche clutch up to it, the overall dimensions are there. However, it doesn't bolt up, and we could take this to the machine shop and, bolt and change the bolt pattern where it does fit. However, our next problem is going to be there's no place to put the actual pilot bearing that accepts that Porsche transaxle. So that's a problem as well. The other issue is there is no provisions anywhere on here to mount a starter. So this engine side does not have a place for a starter, as well as the Porsche transaxle does not have a place for a starter. So we're going to have to figure out that and as well as the initial issue is we're going to have to make our own adapter plate which we'll have to get to next so first order of business we're going to come up with a method of getting a starter attached to this okay for mock-up purposes i just have the toyota flywheel back on here now and this little backing plate is off of a this is a spacer plate between the toyota pickup truck where it mounts to almost the same bell housing pattern and you can see this provision that that bell housing gives to access this flywheel or ring gear to start with the starter motor. Now the big main interference is right here where you can see the casting is gonna interfere with letting this starter motor pass through. But in general, cutting this out and relieving that and adding this to our adapter plate should allow us provisions to get a starter in here as well. I think the first thing we're gonna to have to do is mark out where this is gonna interfere with itself and remove this aluminum from the casting of the block. So right here is the area I marked we're gonna remove. And to do that, we're gonna be using this three inch hole saw. All right, here goes nothing. We can only do this once. Let's hope it goes well. Okay, so the starter is now bolted temporarily to this little base plate that we have here. So you can see this is the Toyota truck flywheel that this gear is meshing up perfectly with. So you can see how that moves in and out just fine. So that is going to engage. So because these don't really work that well together, I think we're gonna come up with a different flywheel option. Let me show you that now. So this giant piece of metal right here is the original flywheel from the case lock series that we did earlier. You can see the cage on this thing pushes it out to give you room to make your adapter plate, as well as this is already set up to mount to that Porsche transaxle. It has the right input shaft and pilot bearing right there, as well as the clutch surface is already made to fit that, that Porsche clutch that I just showed you previously. Why this won't work is this is the bolt pattern that fits the K-Series motor. Now here's what my plan to do is. Now here is looking at the reverse side of that flywheel that fits the K-Series. Now my initial plan here is because this whole thing bolts together, you can see there's like eight bolts that goes around the side of this. I can pop this plate off and I'm assuming that I can go to a machine shop and have this ring gear cut from these welds that are just around the corners. We'll cut that off and we'll remachine this plate 
just to have the Toyota Center to meet that Toyota crank. Okay, six weeks later and a change of plans, we've come up with a flywheel solution. So this was the original flywheel meant for the K-Swap motor. And I mentioned that we were gonna completely build an entirely new one until I found out that would be over $3,000. So what we wound up with was modifying that truck flywheel I used for fitment earlier. So this has been milled on both sides, front and back, and this shoulder right here is what accepts the actual crown or hat off of the case one. So right now I'm gonna show you how to assemble these two and we'll get this thing ready to get on the next stage, which is balancing. Now for another trip back to the machine shop. All right, I got a quick turnaround with this thing at the machine shop. This is actually from the engine machine shop. So you can see they rotated this thing, they've marked it here, and they've marked it on the bottom where the opposite side was. So this is the side they had to remove some material from. If we spin it around, this is the original spot that lined up with that material was originally taken from. So right in that corner there, they took an additional three ounces out of it. So now we have a perf perfectly balanced flywheel. We can get back to building the adapter plate. Okay, so before we can go any further, I need to test and make sure that this starter is meshing up with the ring gear perfectly. So to do that, I just have a jumper wire set up and this jumper wire here to jump the solenoid and we're gonna see how this turns. If everything is working smoothly, we can go ahead and weld that nut into place. So moving on with the build, this is the adapter plate that I've been working on. Now this is what makes this all possible. Now this is basically just two sandwich pieces of steel together that integrates the bolt pattern of the engine as well as the transaxle. Now if you'd like to see that video, I'm gonna leave a link up the top. In the meantime, we're gonna get this thing back together. Now that we have the engine and transmission finally put together, it is time to move forward and get this whole thing put into the car. Now I guess first we should discuss how we're gonna mount the engine. So luckily enough, this 2GR motor comes with these four bolts already made into the side of the block. Now I did just come up with this plate that we have here and bolted it to the, those four mounting locations, as well as had to make some relief cuts for the water jackets and oil runs. So now that this is on here, we'll get our universal engine mounts and we're gonna come in and get that welded on like that. But that won't be until we come up with a cross member. Just a little bit more difficult on the driver's side. So this already had some studs in it, as well as the backs didn't match. They weren't on the same plane. So I had to come in here with these grommets and find the right difference. So these are all backed in properly and bolted in. So now we can move along. So moving right along, I have the engine hoist now out of the way. This engine and transmission is now sitting on this sketchy dolly system that I have set up. So now we're going to roll this thing into the chassis and get everything squared away. And here it is all installed. 
fitting in beautifully. I have the suspension cross member already in there, bolted to the frame. So everything is squared and leveled. Now we just need to make a cross member. So for the cross member, I'll be using inch and a half DOM tubing with a 120 wall thickness. And to bend this, I'm using my JD squared tubing bender. And I'll just be putting in a 40 degree bend for this first bend here. I'll now be setting up for the second bend after measuring. And this will be an additional 40 degree bend. So here is the cross member all bent and trimmed up on the sides. And the way I found the angles that this goes to was I made a quick template based off of the original case swap subframe which helps me find and cut these angles. All this next is to put this in the car and tack weld it to the plates I already have on the vehicle. So now that I have that cross motor tack welded into place, I'm gonna come back in with these motor mounts and tack weld those to those base plates I made on the motor earlier. So that motor mount is welded in, fitting great. Now that tape just represents it can drop its line straight down to that cross member with another piece of tube and then I'll tie that together nicely. However, on the other side, now this is on the passenger side and you can see because the motor's mounts are not symmetrical the way the block was made. This one sits further towards the center of the car. So when I drop it down, it will not touch that cross member. So I'm gonna to have to make like a J frame and I'm gonna make a tube runs from that cross member to the actual unibody, drop down a piece of tube to connect the two, we'll make some gussets and we'll call it good. So to tie our cross member into the unibody, this is the base plate that I've made right here. It bolts through this single piece of sheet metal for the unibody. And right here on the inside, you can see that I sandwich plated this together just to give it the extra strength that it needs. So now we just need to come up with a piece of DOM tubing that will connect this piece of cross member right here to that mounting plate we have on the unibody. So here's our cut section of tube. And that's how that lines up with the mounting plate. So we can get this tacked into place and move on to the uprights. So moving along, there's my upright, just a paper template, just so I can get my copes angles right. We're gonna transfer that template over to some DOM tube and cut out that upright. the process for the driver's side. Now that everything is tack welded together, we can remove the entire subframe and we'll get it out and weld it on the tape. And now we're gonna weld up the motor mounts. Now that everything is welded together,
together. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna make some gussets on the uprights that holds the motor. So we're just gonna cut this into some plate and then we're gonna use these dimple dies just to give it some weight reduction. And because the passenger side engine mount is offset, we're just gonna have to modify and make an additional length onto that bracket. So it looks like they'll both match and it'll still give it the strength it needs. Member is complete. I even throw a coat of primer on it so now we're ready to put this thing in there and get this car back on its wheels. GR MR2 is now back on the ground and everything is lined up really well. Now at this point, there's only one thing I'm really seeing is going to be an issue. I'm going to show you that now. Now that being that there is very minimal clearance for the intake manifold to fit into here. Now naturally enough, we can just remove this X brace and cut into this metal for the stock intake manifold. However, I think we have something better in mind. So we're going to go complete custom and it may pop up through the center of this thing. So as for now, I'm officially done working on this engine swapped MR2. I'll be sending this car back to its owner so he can get all the wiring and everything running. And I should also add that we're going to be getting this vehicle running with both the K motor in it as well as the 2GR. So we'll be able to use both configurations. Now working on this car has been a fun project for me. Not only did it give me the opportunity to enhance my skills, but give me some more time to work with different engine swaps. Building a roll cage for this car was a fun task using the new JD Square Bender as well as working on a car with no roof made things much easier. I also had some additional time to work on my bead rolling skills, making another custom firewall, as well as two new engine cross members and another suspension cross member. Now moving on, the good news is I will be getting back to that V8 swapped MR2. Please look for that in the future. If you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and we'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching.